Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. So we are finally ready to do the first test print on the DIY 3D printer. There's no guarantees it's going to work the first time, but let's give it a go. I've put a G code for a USB holder on this SD card, and I told the printer to preheat. So we shouldn't have to wait that long. So, it's almost at uh, 210 degrees. So the power supply, uh, the HP, wasn't powerful enough, so the voltage dropped and uh, the printer shut off. So now I am trying with a PC power supply. It's only a 300 watt so it can only supply uh, 10 amps. So I hope that's enough. Well, there's uh, something probably wrong with the... Uh, so I don't think this software is working <laughs> as it should, but... Uh, because it only loads filament, as you can hear. There. Maybe I missed something, I don't know. Well, there's something wrong with the CXs also because it's uh, only supposed to be 20 millimeters tall and it's already 22. It could also just be that I set up something incorrectly in the software. Well, maybe we could sell this as a new lightweight material. <laughs> it was kind of printing. The X and Y axes are to scale, but the C axis is, uh, is not. It was about halfway done when I stopped the print, and it's already taller than it should be. But you can kind of with good imagination you can see where the USB plug was supposed to go. Well, so the C axis problem was definitely my fault. Because for some reason there was a plus in the middle of the number, so we'll see if it 
works any better now. So I couldn't really get the Marlin firmware to work. I might have said something wrong, or it could be that the firmware has some kind of box with the kind of settings in the machine that I've got here. I don't really know. I had the problems with the C-axis and also that when it should load files from the SD card it took forever. And also the extruder wasn't extruding when the printer was printing. I searched around on the internet for a while and I couldn't really find any solutions so so I decided to try another firmware and I installed uh, the Repetier firmware and I'm using the Repetier host on the computer. So far I like it much better because I can change settings permanently in the menus and so on and save the settings to the EE prompt. I just did a quick test with it and it seems to work just fine so Hopefully we can get it to print now. I went and put some longer bolts uh, under the print bed because after I changed the extruder the spring I used for the other ones uh, wasn't quite long enough. These are actually too long but I won't cut them since I need them for some other stuff so I'll just buy some that are in between. So we are almost up to temperature now That's not part of the plan. <laughs> it's a little... Okay, so the C-axis was not uh, set correctly. So it was printing a millimeter up in the air. So it will hopefully be better this time. This extruder actually heats up very quickly. It uh, takes less than a minute, I think, to heat up to 225. Well, we could use a heated bed, for sure. <laughs> I'll just try some of this glue stick instead. Uh, I have printed for this with a cold bed on the flashboards before, so... Then we'll just dry it at a relatively low heat, of course. And here we go again.
yeah that really seemed to do the trick uh, the Z axis is too far up now so it's really not putting anything down but uh, at least it's uh, it's printing yeah so the bottom of the part is probably going to suck but uh, by officially first print then it uh, it's probably good enough we can always tweak it later If you remember, one of my goals with this printer was that I would be able to record what was going on. When I print on the Flashforge, uh, I can never get a good camera angle so you can see what is actually being printed. But you can see on this one, even though the part is only 1 by 2 centimeters, uh, we can see everything. So that's very nice. So we are printing at 80 millimeters per second for the infill and the inner perimeters is 60 and I believe the outer ones are 30 or 40, I, I don't remember. And it looks very nice so far. I like the infill on the Flashforge or the Megabot software better though because it's uh, it's much finer. This is very coarse and when it has to print over it, um, it kind of misses some places. But it is definitely an improvement over the aerogel structure we were getting from the Marlin firmware.
So that's it, the print is finished and we'll just let it cool off before we snap it off the build plate. Yeah, it's still fairly warm. So, there we have it. I already went and washed the glue off the bottom here. Uh, you might be able to see the bottom is not perfect but uh, the rest of the print looks very nice <laughs> so I guess that's it the printer is finally working and all I have to do now is just uh, tidy things up a little bit and make it pretty put in the last few bolts and nuts and then we have to make the heated bed. I will have to fix the C-axis though because it can wobble a little bit uh, as you have seen in some of the other videos. What I think I'll do is make some new of these brackets and then make room for two bearings. That way it uh, should not be able to wiggle like that. So thanks for watching this video. And if you liked it, as always, please give it the thumbs up on YouTube. We will get back to this though when we have to make the heated bed and tidy stuff up a little bit. But until then, see you.